Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. Over the weekend, the cryptocurrency market lost its mind for some odd reason. Still no, of course, at the moment answer as to exactly why this took place. However, Bitcoin's price fell below 6,000. I think it, I mean, it maybe says the numbers somewhere around here. I think it's 57, 5,800, somewhere around that price range and ended up falling. And then for some reason, about an hour or so later, uh, the price kind of jumped back up once again. Um, it says right here, Ethereum's price also plunged, as it were. Um, you can find many articles, if you so wish, depending on which coin you hate the most, about which coin plunged and which coin plunged the hardest. I saw a lot of them talking about XRP fell, was 12 cents on the way, Litecoin and Stellar can't seem to hold their own, Neo doesn't appear to be looking good. I saw an entire slew of them, so instead of me having to go through every single one of them, I'll save you the, the time. Every coin fell because Bitcoin fell. There's no exact reason as to why Bitcoin fell. I saw a couple of places talking about that potentially we were once again trying to fill the gap with the actual futures market and that the gap hadn't been officially filled. There was also other news right here. It says Asian markets extend losses as toll from the current world situation surges. Um, really odd. I think stock futures in the States aren't actually down. I didn't check the exact numbers, but from what I could see by the uh, news floating around was apparently, I believe, there's a bit of a positive sentiment floating around because apparently there might be a remedy for everything that's going on, if you know what I'm talking about. It says stocks fall in Japan and Hong Kong, but tick up in Australia on new stimulus vows. There are other countries, of course, coming forward talking about that they're going to be attempting to push more money into the market. It's all they can kind of do right now. They have very low interest rates. No one's interested in the market. A lot of people think that the markets will continue to go down. And the only thing that caused a bit of a surge, I'm pretty sure, once again, in the traditional futures, as the traditional stock market within the States has not opened yet, is the idea that there may be a remedy for everything going on. As, as far as Bitcoin, there's no real indication as to why the price went back up. We're currently up around five, nearly $600 from that drop that we experienced, which also um, didn't really make a lot of sense. I think it could be the, the thin volume or thinner than usual or volume. A lot of people just aren't trading as actively in the market because everyone expects either a, a heavy downward price movement or a slowly moving down price movement as we are still many weeks away from the actual having. So the, the price news being um, the price went down and now the price is back up just to uh, keep you all in the loop. And without further ado, let's move on. In unsurprising news, and I'm pretty sure this is already happening, the CME Group Board of Directors nominee has suggested that venturing into Bitcoin mining will help to create additional revenue streams for its shareholders. Dante Federighi, a nominee for the CME's Group upcoming Board of Directors election, has proposed some steps for alternative revenue streams. We know that the CME Group was the first to launch Bitcoin futures contracts at the end of 2017. Federighi has suggested that the company should now start mining Bitcoin and other digital currencies. He also outlined his vision for the CME Group in his letters to shareholders filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Besides, Federighi has also suggested building huge energy plants and diverting the excess energy to Bitcoin mining. He said some of our largest investors, i.e. BlackRock, are shifting investments to companies focused on creating value for their stakeholders. The CME group needs to get in the front of this trend by building solar, wind, hydro energy plants to power our global operations, then divert the excess energy to mine Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. 
Dante Federighi is also the founder of the investment management firm Forteza Forza RMC. I'm not reading all of those words. Upon its recent proposition, the CME Group Director nominee said that the company will convert all the newly minted digital currencies into fiat. I, I, logic. I, I, I just don't get it. He says that this would help in creating an additional revenue stream for its shareholders. Besides, CME will also benefit from the deep knowledge of new technologies. Uh... Cool. Um, I assume this is already happening. Sorry if, 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 if I'm just assuming too quickly. Um, I'm fairly certain that anyone, any company, I don't care if it's the, Sh the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, if they're into Bitcoin futures, they're probably into Bitcoin something else as well. I assume maybe some of the other people on the board already into cryptocurrency mining operations they've seen over the last maybe two and a half, three years, even despite the declining prices that they have made maybe significant money from the mining operations and this is why they're definitely coming forward to tell everyone else about this it would seem extremely weird if one of the people who's trying to be on the board of directors randomly said hey we should start mining cryptocurrency because it sounds cool no they probably know and have gone through the numbers themselves and have probably made a couple million from their own mining operations to even know that it's profitable um not surprised at all i don't know if you can hear it in my voice so many things like this keep happening like it's the same exact thing we were talking about the day yesterday and the day before with all these banks and these huge institutions constantly coming out as the, and, and even more so pay attention to the timing of everything as the traditional stock market around the world is faltering all of these people just happen to be coming out with news about hey let's mine crypto hey let's sell crypto hey let's start custodying crypto Kind of weird timing, right? Especially, um, once again, as crypto is supposed to be this super volatile, super crazy, super unsafe market that you would even think of telling uh, other people who are probably also worth billions and probably control your future as the as a nominee for a, a, a director position of the CME that they should simply throw their money into a cryptocurrency mining operation, which may not work. But I'm pretty sure, like I said, they've gone through the numbers to know that it does work. Uh, them converting everything in directly back into um, fiat, I think, is um, wonderful for a number of reasons. Because I think people need to have these situations where they learn um, not to cash out of crypto in order for them to really get the point that they should exclusively be into crypto. So I'm going to assume if this isn't already happening or if this does potentially at some point happen in the future, even if not the next couple of months, they can simply... I think this is already happening. I, I, I can't actually change the tone of my voice to be any less sarcastic because the point being, um, much like that guy who sold his Bitcoin for pizzas, I'm certain that at some point, many of the companies who are getting into the cryptocurrency space, especially banks as well, and this is what I think will fuel the um, mass adoption isn't the word. What I, what, 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 what I assume will fuel the, the race to everyone trying to hoard as much cryptocurrency as possible. If you get into a situation where all of these people and the board of directors and the board of other people and the board of investors get into cryptocurrency mining and they immediately start selling off their Bitcoin for fiat currencies and at some point, 6, 9, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 months later, Bitcoin is 10x from where it currently is right now, these people will be very upset. Why did you tell us to sell our Bitcoin? We could have used that Bitcoin. We could have made 10 times the amount of money. And th these are the things that I think need to happen uh, for everyone. We, 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 we've all had those moments where we've either sold or thought about selling um, something. The price ends up going up and we're kind of like, okay, lesson learned. So um, I, what do I also, I mean, cool that they're going to be adding to the, the, the network to help secure uh, the transactions and stuff happening within the network. Um, but I think this is once again, just another ploy for people to continue telling themselves that fiat currencies are going to be okay, even after everything that's been going on. But I mean, you also probably, they, they probably are very conservative investors inside of this as well. So being able to tell them, Hey, not only are we going to mine crypto, uh, but we're also going to just keep those digital numbers on the screen exclusively. I'm sure some of the Warren Buffett aged investors probably wouldn't care for that anyway that's the cme i'm 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 listen i'm certain this is already happening i'm come on i mean it's just it's just blatantly obvious in so many ways at this point next up complex transactions on ethereum 
are on their way to overtake simple transfers. Data has shown pointing to the fact that the network could be regaining dominance from Bitcoin. According to an, an analysis from Defiant, transactions with smart contract executions have grown relative to transactions with simple token transfers. It says the rivalry between Bitcoin and Ethereum has been rampant in the crypto industry for the past six years. I wouldn't call it a, a rivalry. It caused a schism between those that believe blockchain technology was set for more than just token transfers and those that support the original vision of cryptocurrencies. I think that's also not completely true anymore. Um, Ganesh Swami, the co-founder of crypto analytics com company Covalent, or Covalent, studied how fast Ethereum was diverging from Bitcoin from both a use case and transaction perspective. He explained that Bitcoin and other first-generation blockchains support the payment use case. While the second generation blockchains like Ethereum are focused more on smart contracts. But then also, once again, uh, who, who wrote this? Who wrote this article? The, the, the point is, Bitcoin is also a, a blockchain and is also a computer program and can also be updated and upgraded. And we know that there are already people working on um, smart contract use cases for bitcoin in the future and there's nothing really that can't already be done through a side chain on top of bitcoin so that entire discussion is completely um whatever to find out what type of transactions are more dominant on ethereum's network swami decided yeah on a heavy data approach namely the ana the analysts used data from covalent to sum up the gas consumed for each transaction type aggregated monthly for all transactions on ethereum from the Genesis block to the 25th of March, the data looked at around 665 million transactions and showed that all of them were transactions with Ether. Here's a little chart right here. I think this chart is actually more interesting. It's, it's supposedly that the green, if I'm not mistaken, the green over here are the actual DeFi transactions. And I think the blue are the transactions that are happening in Ether. And I think the point that they were trying to make is that apparently there are more yeah, complex are green, and the blue, I believe, is actual ether. And I think the point that they're trying to make is that this looks like it's getting bigger and could overtake the actual transactions happening in ether. Sure, I, I think a, a more um, valid point would have been that this has been growing, not that it is going to overtake ether transactions, the entire point being is that we're seeing a huge uptick in the amount of people who are actually using Ethereum as a decentralized finance platform. I assume a huge hindrance behind the continued growth of all of this is uh, Ethereum can still only do 15 transactions per second. We still do not know if um, Ethereum 2.0 has been delayed. There's still no news and or confirmation on that um but cool people are using ethereum for its intended purpose which i mean is shocking right i guess i didn't kind of see that coming uh the other point is which ties directly into this as well it says the total value of eth locked by DeFi apps or daps in us dollar terms is up by 28 percent in the last three days a boon for traders who witnessed one of the largest single days fall of Ethereum on the 12th of May, March 2020. Who cares? Ethereum is the leading platform for decentralized finance or open finance applications. Its decentralized nature and smart contract capacity means the network is perfect for coin holders to earn interest or borrow loans from their digital asset stash. Uh, here's another little chart right here. Without having to read through it, uh, Ethereum is popular. Ethereum is probably going to continue to be popular. There's a huge amount of people who are using Ethereum, who are using the decentralized finance platforms. A lot of people are starting to, and here's the actual amount of Ether actually locked in DeFi platforms. And this is probably one of the other. I try to remain bullish just on the fact that Ethereum is supposed to be upgrading to 1,000 to 8,000 to a million transactions per second. But the other part that is also quite significant is the actual amount of Ethereum that's being locked up in these platforms. The interesting part is when you lock up Ether, it can't be moved around. And this is the same exact thing we were talking about before with many other blockchain platforms where they lock up their coins and have them in escrow for a certain amount of time. And 
all this, that stuff. It, it creates less ether that can be traded back and forth or that can be actively used. And therefore, the supply itself is shortened, lessened, lowered to where it currently is. So, um, I mean, we keep it. it it's odd. I'm, 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 I'm going to be honest because there's nothing more that I can be right now. Um, we keep getting so much news about the like the awesomeness of Ethereum, the smart contract usage of Ethereum. Like this is not the first time. I think it's at least once or twice a week that we get some type of news like this. Um, it doesn't really matter because the entire thing is going to be unless Ethereum will actually upgrade this year. None of this news holds any weight. It's cool that tons of stuff is being locked up in Ethereum. It's, t it's, it's amazing that tons of people are using more smart contracts and DeFi is going to be a thing, but DeFi on Ethereum won't be a thing if it stays at maximum 15 transactions per second. This is the, this is the overall takeaway. Like, I hold Ether. I haven't sold my Ether. I believe in Ether, but I'm also trying to be as realistic as possible. I've been into Ethereum. I think I heard about it in 2000, what was it, 15? It came out 2016, uh, somewhere, general time frame. I don't remember the exact dates. Uh, we've been promised Ethereum 2.0 since 2017. Still don't have it. If there are any delays on Ethereum 2.0 because of what's happening by the current world situation, um, I would not be shocked if some other platform overtook it. Like even, even Cardano at this point really has to get it together. If you've actually paid attention to the amount of times that the people from Cardano have released news that they were going to actually fully launch their platform or not actually have a, um, a test net and it was going to be a proper net and all this other type of net stuff. Yeah, so um, it seems like so many people, so many platforms could move forward, but everyone seems to be you understand what I'm saying? It's really weird, right? We keep getting so much news. Like, even if you've been here since 2018, you, you also seen this other news as well. Cardano is getting ready for Shelly. Cardano doesn't have Shelly. Cardano's almost near Shelly. We have Shelly, but it's a test net. It's a test net of a test net. And the test net now also has its own test net. And then the other test net is also test netting. Um, when are we going to have Shelly? The beginning of 2020. Nope, still on the test net. When's the real Shelly coming out? Well, hopefully, we hope sometime this summer. Oh, not summer. Maybe, maybe October. It's, it's all these different platforms. I have another friend who's very into um, crypto as well. And we were discussing how many projects have said that they are going to do stuff and haven't really done stuff. And I understand that it takes a long time. I understand that a lot of these things are meant to be new age platforms for the next era of finance. But they've all been promising stuff for the last three and a half years up at this point. And none of them have delivered. So it's great and it's wonderful that we have test nets. It's amazing that we have companies um, buying platforms that nobody's using. I'm looking at you, BitTorrent. Um, it's wonderful that tons of people are locking up their Ether. But all the locking up does nothing if there is no proof of stake. Because then more lockup happens and we have more transactions. It, it does absolutely nothing for all of these platforms and um i'm also i also have a side eye at neo because once again neo it, all these things all these projects they all have promised the exact same thing all for all these years you wonder why my my focus has shifted from talking so heavily about other altcoins and maybe just two or three or four at a time it's because the people from Bitcoin haven't really promised anything. They were like, it's going to remain slow and we're going to have side chains that kind of speed it up. And that's the only thing that's really happened. Um, not to, it's, it's, it's been a long day. The day just started. It's already been a long day. But even just in general, I'm, I've gotten, I'm, I'm tired of articles like this that keep talking about the awesomeness of things uh, that just aren't really taking place. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, we, we, we can see the numbers and we know that people are locking it up, but... What does this lead to? Like, can you imagine a situation if in three years we still don't have the, the phase zero of Ethereum 2.0? Can you imagine by the year 2022 if we still don't have Shelly, if we're still on the test net? Remember the news that we had? What was it? Last year or the, or, or the year before? 
that there was some type of upgrade on Tron that would allow it to have a million transactions per second? You can find it. I'm Google it right now. Tron a million transactions per second. It's either going to be 2018 or 2019. It's definitely somewhere out there. I think, I, I think Lumens also has something like that. There's just so much news about all the altcoins that doesn't really... Maybe I'm just frustrated. I don't know what it is. I, 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 I can't honestly say. Uh, it's great that all of these platforms are being used, but unless, um, you need scaling. We need to scale. We are at the point in the cryptocurrency industry where you can't keep saying that your platform is going to scale and be able to handle these millions of, even a thousand transactions per second. That is great. You currently have 15. This is why the entire rhetoric or the entire idea or the entire use case of Bitcoin has simply shifted to, well, we're going to just use it as a, um, as, as a store of value. And it seems to be working because people have kind of taken to it. People have accepted that Bitcoin, the main chain, is going to be slow. But every other platform, every other platform that keeps talking about that they're going to upgrade, they're not upgrading. And we keep getting news that they're just not like all the other proposals that we also had for Ethereum also seemingly have poofed away. Why don't we hear about Plasma? Why don't we hear about Casper? Why don't we hear about all these other things? What, what, what happened to all the other side chains and all the, all the ZK snarks and all the other things as well? We don't hear about them either. I don't know. I, 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 I think I've grown intolerant of the, of the hubbub. That's not a, a, at all what I'm trying to say. It's more like a, this needs to happen. You need to scale. A lot of my focus... I'll tell you right now, if Ethereum hasn't released the beginning phase of Ethereum 2.0 and initiated proof of work and proof of stake chains at the exact same time by July, like they said, when we had news before that it was going to happen at the end of last year, I think a lot of my focus will then probably shift almost exclusively to Bitcoin and XRP. And I don't even mean that as, as a slight joke. At least we know that XRP is um, being used. At least we know XRP has a number of very high transactions. Uh, and we know that Bitcoin is, is Bitcoin. Besides that, there's no other coin out there that really shines for me. It's just not a thing at the moment. Like there's every other coin that said that even the only reason why I, I focus on Ethereum is because Ethereum has hundreds of companies who are standing behind it. But even then, I'm pretty sure they're also having the exact same conversation that I'm having with all of you right now. It's like, hey, you, we, 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 we've been backing you since 2016. You said in 2017, you'd have the upgrades. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just, just a little bit longer, man. Just a little bit longer. Hey, it's, uh, it's, uh, you said last December you were going to have the upgrades. A couple more months. Um, I'm tired of rambling. I didn't even mean to ramble. It was just a complete honesty ramble it had to come out um i even said before remember when i said in 2019 i was like hey if any other project can can swing past ethereum do it if if at any point tron cardano lumens or any other project happens to overtake xrp and ethereum you will you will be on you at the top of my list and i'll talk about you all the time uh however um yeah right let's move on i guess this also kind of ties into it as well bitcoin mentions on twitter have doubled in the first quarter of 2020 as compared to the same period last year meanwhile mentions of top altcoins like xrp ether and litecoin have declined considerably since the turn of the year signaling waning interest in these cryptocurrencies XRP mentions on social media app on the social media app continue to decline with time as interest is declining slowly in the banking settlement focused cryptocurrency. It has nothing to do with the whole banking thing. We, we've, we, we know that there are multiple other companies who are going to be using XRP for things that have nothing to do with banks. The decline peaked on the 21st of March with only 2,500 tweets bearing the hashtag XRP posted on that day. It's marked a 60% decline from January alone as daily XRP tweets amounted to 7,000. The only other time the third largest cryptocurrency recorded such a huge decline was about 21 months ago, where tweets were around 2,500 tweets, I guess, per day. Litecoin Twitter mentions also declined massively since the turn of the year, as engagement about the fastest version of Bitcoin <laughs> decreased substantially. Um, we, we, we never get any Litecoin news. We never get Charlie Lee news. We never get update news. 
We never get um, Mimble Wimble news. We never get partnership news about Litecoin at all. I can't remember the last time I even said the word Litecoin. Can any of you remember? At all. And I'm pretty sure even the, the Litecoin upgrades were supposed to have happened at the end of last year as well. The two-year low is a massive plunge from 2017-2018. High when the cryptocurrency was often mentioned, the lead to its bull run. The high engagement level coincided with the digital currency uh, price rising 10x between March and May. Back then, Litecoin peaked at over 30,000 single-day Twitter mentions. Litecoin went from, I think, $4 to 320 or something like that. <coughs> Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency following a similar pattern to the other top altcoins, uh, so as dwindled in 2020, the smart contract-based cryptocurrency is, is averaging around 2,500 daily mentions. Um, here's a little chart right here. The leading cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, bucked the trend by showing a resurgence in its Twitter engagement growing substantially in 2020. The upward trend peaked on the 26th of March as Bitcoin was mentioned over 24,000 times on Twitter. Uh, and I guess the, it says the all-time high was 155,000 tweets. And that was during the bull run of 2017. It could simply be waning interest. It could simply be maybe more people just aren't on Twitter. They may be just on Netflix more during this time period. Um, it could be a million and one things, but I've definitely noticed, and I'm pretty sure you have to be honest with yourself. You've also felt a, a, a decline in the amount of energy around other cryptocurrency projects. I think the main reason why Bitcoin, first of all, Bitcoin's number one, it's Bitcoin. But then you also have the, the energy around the other stuff we keep talking about, all the platforms that are using it, all the platforms that so-and-so. And Bitcoin has also been a major uh, topical focus point as traditional markets have been going down and people have been waiting to see what hashtag Bitcoin would do during this um, decline in the market. But it all kind of coincides. Um, I understand that during this period, it would maybe be foolish for companies to release any type of maybe good news or upgrade news as um, the current world events are unfolding. But it is a bit odd. Like I said, be honest with yourself that there are so many other platforms uh, that promised upgrades over the last two, three, four years. There's still no upgrade. They're on test nets when they promised two years ago that they would be a main net. Um, it's all a bit odd. And I've noticed... Um, there are other people, uh, crypto tubers, who are also noticing as well that uh, a lot of promises haven't been kept. And I mean, listen, Charlie Lee already mentioned that he was kind of basically light stepping away from Litecoin. Don't say that he didn't say that because he mentioned it a couple of times. He said he was going to work on Nano. You can find that out as well. If you Google around, um, I think the cryptocurrency market, especially in times like this, um, thrives on not only news, but on news that there will be better times. We have to know for certain that there are going to be upgrades. We have to know for certain that while prices are declining, that there is something to look forward to after. Um, and this is, I mean, like I said, I think it would be, it would do nothing to prices if we got the news that these, that these upgrades were officially going to happen. But I think we still need you understand what I'm saying? Like it's like during during a downtime when the market needs a push up, you still have to like we are in essence all investors of these altcoins. You have to. It's it's not a reassurance, but I let me know that you're still working on what I have money in. Let me know that I should keep my money in your project because as of right now, the the one that's shining the most is 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 usually always bitcoin there's like a, a dim shimmer from other coins but um i mean it's it's not only just me like even just on social media like we we re remember a couple of months ago we were talking about before the actual like google trends and you can actually like chart out and see um how many mentions there are of bitcoin on google alone and the more mentions there are the higher that bitcoin's price actually goes it's all coincided. I, I, I assume it could also just be that most people are just fatigued with all financial markets right now um, because, you know, 
I don't have to explain anything to all of you. You've 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 seen what's been taking place the last um couple of months. And to finish things off, Binance says it's delisting leveraged assets tied to Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, EOS, and Binance Coin tomorrow. In a statement, the crypto exchange, the crypto exchange says. Users can still deposit and withdraw their leveraged tokens two hours before it ceases support for leveraged FTX tokens and their trading pairs. It said, we will credit your Binance account with the equivalent value held in each leveraged token at the time of delisting in Binance US dollars and within 14 days. Binance says it's taking action because users are simply too confused about how leveraged tokens work. Leverage tokens allow crypto traders to buy positions worth more than they can currently afford, which can be extremely risky, but potentially profitable if they bet correctly. The tokens are designed to automatically reinvest, reinvest profits, so they work best in trending markets. Tokens that provide 3x leverage were first launched by crypto derivatives exchange FTX. And Binance started to begin offering FTX leverage tokens on its platform after investing in the company in December of 2019. They said that they're going to be delisting uh, all bull and bear pairings. So ETH bull, ETH bear, EOS bull, EOS pair, BNB, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, this is what, what I think actually has been taking place. And this is, you know, this is all assumption. Um, I think it could be too much too quick. I think Binance and many other platforms have been trying to list as many things on their platform as humanly possible, trying to not only keep up the interest from cryptocurrency traders, but also people within the traditional financial markets who may be willing to go into leveraged positions on uh, cryptocurrencies because maybe they see a bit more of a chance of an upswing or a downswing when they're doing their bet so that they can make the most amount of money. Um, the other thing, now bear with me, what I think is actually probably taking place is that a lot of people get into these positions on cryptocurrency exchanges, lose money, and then um, go back home to mommy to complain that they lost money. Not saying that that's exactly what happened. Uh, remember all the other platforms when they had um, 100x leverage positions? Those are huge. Like to have a 100x leverage position, if you get that correct, you make bank you make millions of dollars in one instance if you get it wrong and you're betting with money that you don't have remember there was a an article last year that that cryptocurrency trader um he lost i think it was like 8.6 million dollars in one trade and then subsequently um i'm trying to find the nice way of saying it he did the the, the ultimate thing to himself because he lost all that money. Um, it's, ve it's very difficult to be able to play in positions like this, especially when we have a market that's as volatile, volatile as this, and also where we have these huge um, flash crashes that we've been having, and also where Bitcoin goes from 10,000 to 3,700 over the course of a um, two, three, four, five week period. So I assume what's happened, this is my assumption, is that not only are people too confused because people, what it is, is people are probably, people are probably confused because they're, they think that they can trade more than they actually have the same exact way that a lot of people don't understand credit cards. Now, hang with me on this one. I remember when I was younger and there was a news report and they, I remember they were asking teenagers and like between the ages of 16 to like 19, somewhere within that time for maybe even 21, 22, 23, who cares? Asking them exactly how do credit cards work? And they were like, well, it's, it's, it's money from the bank that they let me um, buy stuff with. And they were like, yeah, but, but, but how does it work? Well, they, they give me free money to my account and I can buy stuff with it. So who, 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 who pays for this debt? My, my mother and father do. Okay, and then what happens to that debt? Well, I don't know. Like, it's just I, I take out the card and I swipe it. You know, there are a lot of people who think that credit cards are just free money that, that the bank is giving them. Like, even when they're told about interest rates or that they have to pay some of the money back, they don't understand it because they just assume that it's just free money that's been handed to them. This is why credit cards are so popular in certain countries, especially in the States, because people just assume it's free money when I need it here and now. And when they get these huge bills for these credit card, car, for credit card cards, 
they 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 stand there shocked because they didn't understand that there was going to be a huge interest rate on it. What do you mean I have to? Why do I have to pay so much back? I only spent five hundred. Why am I not paying back five hundred? So I can only assume that people who found out that they could trade with money that they didn't have were probably trying to put a thousand into the market, trying to do a three, four, five, ten x on the platform lost their money and then went to Binance and was like, I, don't, I didn't know what I was doing. I know that's exactly what happened. That's it. It's not about people understanding. It's about people trying to get away with things that they thought that they could get away with. And then when they lose their money, they know in the back of their heads, you can run to the people from Binance and go, I had no idea what, please, please reverse it. I had no idea. And I'm pretty sure after the 35th message, uh, they were like, okay, we need to uh, do something about this. I'm pretty sure I've, I, I haven't done leveraged uh, token trading on any platform. Uh, but I assume assumption time before you use this, maybe there's like a little pop-up screen that says like, Hey, make sure you know what you're doing because you probably don't. I, this is, this is probably exactly what happened. Here's the actual press release from Binance right here. It says Binance will delist all FTX leverage tokens because I'm pretty sure they were tired of people losing money. Um, that's exactly what happened. I can, I can like see it very clear. Um, you don't know you do people people are people love to bet and people love to take the risk and then when they realize that they've lost tons of money they probably send the people from binance a message saying oh i thought this was normal trading i thought i was on the normal position why does my account say negative now can you reverse that that's exactly what happened the point is um it's always remember like i said the other day it's always one or two people, in this case, probably hundreds of people who ruin it for, ruin it for everybody else. Um, if you don't know how to trade, don't trade. If you're trying to be a master trader and you can't trade, don't trade. If you're trying to get into a leverage traded position and you have no idea what, what, what the word leveraged means, nonetheless trading, don't do it. There have been so many things that have been ruined within the cryptocurrency space, not saying that leverage trading was like the, the greatest thing that's ever happened to the market, but there's so many, like, just stop. Just stop trying to... Stop trying to, to, to con and cheat the system and then getting upset when you uh, couldn't do it correctly. I, I can feel it. I know that's exactly what happened. It's not that people don't understand it. It's that people lost too much money and the people from Binance were probably annoyed. Uh, so I assume uh, what will probably end up happening, psychic moment, um, is about three, four, five, six months from now, Binance will reintroduce leverage trading because I assume they make an, an enormous amount of money from actual leverage trades. They're going to reintroduce it, but you probably have to have a minimum in your account. You probably have to tick a couple of boxes to say that you understand the risks. And you probably also have to have, um, remember all those things a couple of years ago where you had to be um, an accredited investor to be able to trade in a lot of these platforms? Same exact thing is probably going to happen. And it's going to happen to a wide amount of the cryptocurrency space because people do get into these markets, don't understand what's happening. Remember all those people from, um, from, from BitConnect? crying in their cars because a friend told them, yeah, you put money into it and you make money. But how, how do you make money from that? Well, I saw the guy on YouTube and he made money from it. He put his, it's super simple. Put your money into it. You get free money. Okay. That sounds cool. Well, the price is going down. Don't take it out. Don't take it out. That's how you, that's how you lose people. Just learn, just do your own research. Take the time out. Like many of us are home now. We can't leave our homes. Learn, open a book, Stop going on Netflix. Learn what all of this stuff is. You know, there was a, I remember in 2000, when, when, when I first started this channel, I, I like the, the skim top of finance. I, I barely understood what a lot of, I still don't understand everything because I think it's impossible to know the exact intricacies of every single global financial market. I used to take at least an hour out of my day just to read. Read what all of these things are. Read what mutual funds and stocks and equities and securities and, and like, and just to learn all of these phrases and to learn what leverage trading was and to learn what cryptocurrencies were and to learn exactly which cryptocurrencies I should be getting into. And I used to read the white papers and all these other things. Yeah, you, you have to expand your mind. You can't just simply absorb what other people are saying. Throw your money into something and then when the price goes down, you get upset. I, I could, I could show you millions of comments. I'll never forget this. I remember in 2017 when the market was going up. People literally were basically kissing my feet. Oh my gosh, you're a genius. I'm like, I'm not a genius. Like, I'm just following the, where the market is going. First of all, the entire market was going up. So anybody could have said anything and any coin would have gone up ready. And by the time the market started going back, like was harshly going down in 2018, the amount of things that people were saying, I lost my kid's college fund. I lost so-and-so. And so my girlfriend won't talk to me. My girlfriend wants to get a divorce. Like a divorce. And I'm like, 
Whose fault is that? Why didn't you learn? Like, I also lost money when the market was going down. Like, why? What was the what was the period where I was like, okay, I'm going to take complete. It's, it's completely my fault if you lose money. You're an adult as well. Make sure you learn where you're putting your money into. Do you want to know why there are some people who make millions on the stock market? It's not because they got lucky. It's because they learned for at least a year. It takes time to learn where all of these things are. When I talk about there are other coins that I don't talk about on the channel, it's because they're garbage. And I know these coins are garbage because I've read through the white papers. I've seen exactly these coins have copy and pasted what other cryptocurrency projects have said. And a lot of these cryptocurrency projects that I don't talk about and never have spoken about on the channel, you don't hear about them anymore because they were garbage from the get-go. No one uses them. This is why it's very important to learn why Bitcoin's important. Why every single news article keeps talking about Bitcoin. Why Bitcoin is the only thing, and sometimes Ether, are the things that are being added to these banking platforms, or to this institution, and to this so-and-so. It's very important. You have to learn why these things are important. It's not just about putting your, like, at least learn something. It's not just about putting your money into it and being like, yeah, I made $35,000. Learn why you made that $35,000. Learn where all of this is going. You ha All the other trends I was talking about before and all the other videos, I'm so glad that there are some people who actually do get it on the channel. Learn about the trends we were talking about. Why has Bitcoin still remained in the number one position after all of this happening? Why with three to five maximum transactions per second has Bitcoin remained the number one coin? It's all completely obvious if you have been doing research. Like me saying do your own research isn't just something to save my behind when you lose money. I mean it. I tell this to all my friends as well who try to get into crypto. I don't even I don't even recommend people get into it anymore. I have so many situations where people are like, "Oh yeah, he's into crypto. Um tell tell him how to how, how, how to buy it." I, I I tell them and I and I ask them always. What do you know about this space? Well, I know it's money. It's not money. Well, I, well I know it's it's um I know the price went up by a lot. Why did the price go up by a lot? Because because my my friend told me that he put money into it, and I I, I just kind of stopped talking to them. And I tell them when you have researched enough, come back to me, and I'll tell you exactly what to start doing and how much to start putting into the market. You know, I never hear from these people again because people don't want to read. People don't want. It's so easy. It's not even about reading. You can you can there there are so many in in uh, videos on YouTube where you can actually learn about finance billions of videos you can even go into investopedia the next time you go to the bathroom take your tablet and open up investopedia and just read one article just read and learn about something learn what the international monetary fund is learn what the cme is learn why the stock market has been around for so long learn about the history of the stock market why we have stocks where the first stocks came from learn about the the the, the dutch companies and the french companies and the italian companies in the 17 and 1800s that created the stock markets that we have right now it's all there it's all free information you have to learn what all of these things are. It's not as simple as losing money and then going, well, I was, I was too confused. I didn't know what I was doing. Learn what you're doing before you lose your money. Didn't mean to get upset. I'm not even upset. It's, it's the truth. You have to do it. It's so, it's so nonsensical. I remember people, people asking me, um, somebody told me that he got money from a family member who had passed. And he was like, yeah, I got about a good quarter of a million dollars. Where should I buy real estate? I was like, what? Why, why would you ask? Like, as I'm not an oracle, like I don't have every question. You should buy Panama. There's places that like it's 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 nonsense. You have to do your own research, like figure out where to put your own money. Like it's 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 this it's this really weird situation because I know what's going to happen again. And, I, and, I, and I'm 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 dreading it. I know for a fact. For a fact. At least 15 people listening to this right now. A lot of them who it's, it's completely gone over their heads. They're not even paying attention to half the stuff that I'm saying. They're probably making a pizza in the oven or something like that. When the market goes up, the level of euphoria is going to be intense. When we pass by 10,000, 15,000, and we are scratching the surface of 20,000, people are going to be dumping money into the market in mass in an attempt to make as much money as humanly possible. I believe that when Bitcoin hits $50,000 per coin, we're going to see a massive drop. I don't know if it's going to be induced by whales. I don't know if it's going to be pure fear and speculation. I don't know if we'll have another world situation like we're currently having right now, but the price is going to fall. Just like we saw the 20,000 fall. Things don't go up forever. And what's going to end up happening is there are going to be so many people who are going to come back to this channel. They're going to curse me out. They're going to threaten me like I was threatened. You know how many times I've been threatened on this channel? 
by people because they lost money and blamed it on me. I'll never forget people who told me that they got into XRP when the price was around five or 10 cents, the price went up to $3 and people, the comment section, you would have, you would have thought we just entered a new utopia. Comment section was glorious. As the price hit around like a dollar 80 and prices were tumbling down, why didn't you tell me when to sell? Why didn't you tell me so-and-so? Man, I lost so much money. That I, I just put money in at $2. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell yourself? Why didn't you learn? Like, I give you all the news of what's happening. So it makes it a lot easier for you to not have to go through all the different places to figure out why the cryptocurrency market is doing X, Y, and Z on a certain day. I am not your father. I am not your mother. You have to learn. Like I said, many of us are home right now. Many of us with nothing to do. Take this time out of your life to learn one new thing a day about cryptocurrencies. Make that, your, make that your April goal. Learn one new thing a day. The entire day. Just learn financial terms. Learn what leverage positions are. Learn about Binance. Like, learn about, like, it doesn't even have to be boring things. Learn about what you like the most in the cryptocurrency space and really dive deep into them. Learn exactly what they are, why they are. Learn about the board of directors. Who controls Ripple? Who are the people who are working at Blockstream and who work on Bitcoin? Learn about all these things. Go through the old um, Reddit Twitter posts and read what Satoshi Nakamoto used to say. It's all there on the internet. This is all free. 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 It's all for you. It's all free. None of this costs money. It's all free information that you can all use by yourself for free to learn. When the market goes up, and a lot of you make tons of money, and then when the market goes back down, please don't blame me, please don't blame Binance, please don't blame the Gemini twins, as boring as they may be, please don't blame Coinbase or anybody else. It's, it's nonsense. It's complete and utter nonsense. Um, on that note, I, I, I guess we will... Uh, finish things off because I know, I, I know that that's exactly what happened and it has to be so frustrating for the people who like make these actual programs on these platforms to have people just simply try and like scam the website and simply go oh I lost my money I don't know what I was doing I thought I wasn't a normal trading platform you knew you weren't the, the, the trading platforms on, on exchanges look completely different on their leverage to their normal exchanges kind of a ranty video very ranty i ranted about ethereum not upgrading all the other coins who were talking about upgrading not having their upgrades and it's just it's just it's just complete nonsense because so many things keep happening within the cryptocurrency space and i'm maybe i maybe i just look at the world through a different lens different scope i can't exactly figure out what phrase i'm trying to use but so much of it is is just nonsense we know that all the banks and all the institutions are already into crypto. We know that they're buying up Bitcoin. We know that they're trying to get into it. Like when we get the news, it, it, it just happens to trickle down to us months later. I'm fairly certain that the CBE, uh, the CBOE, and probably the NASDAQ and the, and the New York Stock Exchange are probably are already actively mining crypto, if not getting into some type of venture, or they are invested heavily into some type of thing to make extra Bitcoin. It's just all... I think, I think it annoys me when the people who are already rich are doing these things as opposed to the people, like I said, who should be learning more to understand how all of this works. Like, ah, this is why rich people stay rich because they, they learn and they get ahead while other people just try to scam Binance. And then anyway, it is what it is. Um... When the market goes up, and then when the market goes down, we already know what's going to happen. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Yasha Harari, Moonman High XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Josh Gorsica, Chongololo, Songololo, Nostromo, Mr. Pickles, John Sarston, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Bare Bones Mining, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Mohammed Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand. Brady Neal, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Milweezy, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Nicholas Renault, One Piece, One Love, Damien Setsuna, Nick Kanai, Wishy Wish, Third, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto and Bishop, Main Paxis, Nick Mondial, Vody Anthony, Charles, Jim Garner, Jemmy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hesher, Sabidan, Kyle Skip, Leg Day, Yester, Crypto, Bunny McBoat Face, Anytime Fitness, Mosh Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Big Me Cake, Tigger, and Machinisa on Crypto with Lionel, Frail and Michelle URL, Hold On, I Have to Sneeze. Thank you very, very much for your support, and thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. At the moment, 
The market's in green, kind of-ish. This, this was the huge dip that we saw a couple of hours ago where Bitcoin fell below 6,000. I can't even tell you if, if it looks like we're going to 7,000. I, I skimmed through multiple articles before I made this video. It's, it's about a good 40, 60 right now. There are a lot of people who think that this boost up was very bullish for the price of Bitcoin and that we could be potentially on our way to a $7,000 or at least a trying of getting to a $7,000 Bitcoin. Other people who say that this dip was disastrous. We're going to have a head and shoulders pattern and therefore we're about to dip back down again. Uh, I think Tone Vase was also in the news recently talking about that. According to his research, Bitcoin is poised to go back around 3,000, but it won't hit 2,500. Sure, why not? Um, I'm not expecting big things from the market. I think there's so much. The the trading volumes have, they're relatively um, abysmal at the moment. So it's very, it's very easy to either scare the market and or cause the market to be swung in one other direction. Every single time that we do have any type of upward momentum, the amount of analysts that come out of the woodworks talking about that the, that the push up was too high, too fast, and that they believe the, the, that the prices of these cryptocurrencies are going to go back down are far too high. There's, there's so much negative sentiment from analysts. It's absolutely insane. And then only when the market is actually going back up, are they not only flabbergasted, but they also go, well, my chart showed that that eventually was going to go back up because of course the prices are eventually going to freaking go back up. That's just how the cryptocurrency market works in every other market. So I'm kind of waiting at this point to kind of see exactly what the traditional stock market is going to do. Just assume assumption that whales behind the scenes are actively waiting to push prices down should the stock market open up in a lower whatever. Um, there is no real hyper correlation between the stock market and the cryptocurrency market. Um, so just assume if there's a downward motion on the stocks, we can see a downward motion in crypto. If there's a huge upward swing in stock markets because someone may have found a remedy, don't get your hopes up, uh, then we may also see an upswing, some type of an upswing in the cryptocurrency market. But as of right now, I'm not really hopeful. I'm kind of very neutral. Um, I wholeheartedly believe the cryptocurrency market prices, at least if not the top three coins, should be a lot higher right now. There should be a lot more sentiment in the market. But once again, a lot of people don't understand the actual premise or idea of Bitcoin and why Bitcoin's important. And a lot of people just seemingly focus, or not even seemingly, they simply focus on Bitcoin's dollar value. This is why, you, you, have you ever seen when, when cryptocurrency people, like especially like Andreas Antonopoulos and many other people, they say, well, one Bitcoin is still worth one Bitcoin. One Satoshi is still a Satoshi. This is why it's very important in my eyes when I invest to make sure that I accumulate Satoshis. I don't care about the current dollar value because I know what the future prospects of the price is going to be. A lot of people get discouraged uh, ridiculously enough when the prices are going down, not realizing that they can accumulate more because prices will eventually go back up. And then people only destructively FOMO into the market when the price is too high or three, four X what it currently was before when they could have gotten into the market. It, it, it's always this really, um, other people are into it. The prices are going up and therefore I have to get into it because the prices are now going up. Not trying to, um, once again, this is why rich people keep getting rich. Same exact thing with the stock market. The stock market goes down. Everyone else flees, panics. The people who already were super rich were like, let's throw a couple of million into it or throw any money into it at all when it looks like it's really low. And then eventually at a certain point, years down the line, because people never usually look down the line, the markets go back up and the people go, oh, of course the rich got richer. Yeah, because about four, five, six, seven years ago, they were like, let me put money into the market and let me wait. So many people keep getting into the cryptocurrency market they're thinking that they could put money into the market and in a week and a half later it's going to be skyrocketing. That's not how it works. This is like every other market. You don't buy property for 50000 100000 a fixer-upper and do you assume that next year that property is going to be worth a million? Why would you assume that buying XRP or buying Bitcoin or buying anything else would be the exact same way? XRP is probably not going to be $38 next month. XRP is probably not going to be $38 by the end of this year. XRP is probably not going to be $38 by the end of next year. XRP is probably not going to be $38 by the end of 2024. It's about the long-term holding. And this is why, once again, if you haven't already, learn about investing. Learn what it's about. Long how, learn how long things take. I watched a documentary a couple of months ago about generational wealth. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Why? Because they were talking about how long it actually takes to build up this wealth. They were saying that there were a couple of families 
in the pa -pa 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 -pa, they, they, they were talking to wealthy families now and they were saying how did your family get so wealthy and they were like oh I don't want to talk about it, but they, they, they kind of got into it. They said they had a grandmother or a grandfather at some point who came from some other, some other country, some other place, landed in America in the 1800s, and they saved up every penny they possibly could to start putting it away to something. Once again, this is a good 200-something years ago. At some point, the grandfather bought a little house somewhere in the countryside. He used that money to rent it out. Uh, started buying other houses and eventually when he got enough money, he sold all those houses, started buying property in New York City before it was completely developed, kept on going so and so and so. And now the entire family owns billions of dollars worth of real estate. It didn't happen overnight, not going to happen overnight. The same exact thing with a whole bunch of other families. They started little tiny mini stores. They started the stores, they opened up a second store, third store, fourth store. It became a chain, it became very popular. They started selling this and that for that store. And now they're one of the largest manufacturers in the entire world. It takes a long time. It's not saying that you won't become super rich or richer than you ever thought you could possibly be over the next couple of years, if not maybe by the end of this year, depending on where prices go. But it does take a while. It is rather frustrating to have people's anxieties and fears and frustrations pour onto me and my other friends who are in the cryptocurrency space a lot. I do know a couple of other um, crypto tubers and we discuss it sometimes. It's so insane that people like get upset with us if we don't talk about their coins, if we don't talk about their scams, if we don't talk about the price movements of some other coin. Like how many times have I been told in the comment section, this coin went up by 28%. Why are you talking about it? You're doing such a disservice to your listeners. And I'm like, no, I'm not. That coin's garbage. No one's ever going to use that coin. And then a good two weeks later, the price is back down. And I'm like, if I had told the people on my channel to buy said coin, they would have lost tons of money because people can't time exactly when they should cash out of the market. Just do your own research. Um, learn where things are going. Understand. Understand this right now. Understand me. It may take anywhere from three, five to ten years for the cryptocurrency market to get as high as you want it to go. There is no other asset that you can buy that is going to 15, 25 X over the course of a month or two months or three months or six months. So don't assume that it'll happen within the cryptocurrency space as well. The profits to be made within the cryptocurrency market are insane. Even this one coin, random thing, going up by 6.5, even to 6.9% over the course of a, what is it, six? five and a half hour period, 12 hour whatever period is obscene. There aren't many assets that can do that. If you stay here for a long term, the odds of you making a lot of money within the market are fairly higher than they are lower. It's not a guarantee, but it's a lot higher than many other industries. I think a lot of people have 2017 in their head as something that was automatically going to repeat a couple of months down the line. That's not how markets work, especially not one with all the stuff that's happening in the world right now. I'm, I implore you. I mean it. Just do your own research. It's not difficult. I don't care if you don't like to read, watch a video. I don't care if you don't like videos, read. I don't care if you like other, if you, whatever. Listen to an audiobook. Listen to a podcast. Just learn what all of these things are. You have to learn. It makes no sense for you to be in this market just to make money because even after that, you won't properly know where to invest that money. You won't know how to make more. You won't know how to create any type of wealth. Like imagine you take out 300, half a million from the cryptocurrency market. Where do you put it? What do you do with it? What other investments do you, like what, what, what else do you do? What's a dividend? How do they work? Like it's, it's just all these things you have to learn about. It, it strengthens your mind and also strengthens your capacity to know exactly what's happening within the cryptocurrency space. I think I'm done ranting. Um, I don't know if I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe I haven't had breakfast yet. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, you have the time. Don't say that you don't. Learn how to invest. Learn what all of this stuff is. Just learn. It's not difficult. Um, I do hope that in, in some way you enjoyed my ranting. Um, someone 
commented, and it's not that it even gets to me. Some people, sometimes when I say some things, people are like, you have to stop letting it get to you. It's not that it gets to me, it's that I, 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 I get annoyed when people say ridiculous things that they know that they shouldn't be saying. Um, somebody commented yesterday that my video, and I assume this one as well, uh, were far too long. I don't know how to please you. Go away. I, I can't help you. If, if the, I make these videos to help people. That's my entire point. I'm here to spread the message that we are in the, a market where we can make huge amounts of money, massive amounts of money. I'm here to help everyone as much as I can. If my, if my videos are 15 minutes, cool. If my videos end up being an hour, nine minutes long, so be it. I have to say what I have to say. If you don't like my channel, there are other channels where people can tell you exactly which scammy coins to get into and how to lose your money. Um, for those of you who remember those, remember those channels with that, uh, with those three guys who were standing in front of a Lamborghini and they had the, uh, um, what was it? They had that, like that, that board that they were riding on. They were like, man, you got to get into this coin because it's totally gonna 10 X. And then the coin would go down the very next day. You realize like a lot of the scam channels have completely disappeared. That's a good thing, but there's still a lot of them out there. A lot of them are. I, I, I look at other cryptocurrency channels. They make sure, a lot of them make sure that you are afraid, that you think that it's the end of the world. The amount of crypto videos that I've seen with the C word or talking about the world is over, the end is nigh, where to put your money, and the screenshots of people holding their faces or the emojis that are crying are completely out of control. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I hope that you all have, are having, try to have, read something, open a book, open, open an internet, do something. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be, you should be learning. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I love, the, for those of you not looking at the screen, I love the, the expression on her face. It's, it's for the Binance article about um, people not understanding. She looks so confused, like, what's a laptop? Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will, without a doubt, be talking to you all soon. See you.